Okay folks, welcome back. This is the third and final part of lecture eight of the experimental design and analysis series in core skills. And before the break, we were looking at how analysis of variance works using a worked example um, of the Galapagos finches, Darwin's finches. And now I want to look at a, a, a question that arises as a result of an example like that. And that's gonna give rise to the concept of a post hoc test. And then finally, very briefly actually, because it's all gonna look very familiar, we want to look at the assumptions of this test that we've just performed, because obviously if you can't meet those assumptions of a parametric test like ANOVA, then you're gonna to need to do something different. So um, if you remember, we're looking at this situation, we've got five different species, each appears to be adapted to eating a different kind of seed and the data seem to bear this out because we see significant differences in the diet of the five species. But you might well be interested in, well, which species is different from which? So, I, you know, we can see that the cactus ground finch eats much bigger seeds than the sharp beaked ground finch. So that's probably going to be a significant difference. But what about the large and the medium? ground finches, the error bars nearly overlap. Could this be a non-significant difference? Maybe these two species are actually effectively the same. We don't know that from our single analysis of variance result, which just says there are significant differences. So plotting the graph actually is a really good start. And especially if you've got reliable error bars on there, then by looking for overlap between the error bars, we get a very good idea of if we were to do a subsequent test, whether those differences are significant. Um, and so sometimes it's enough just to show the graph and describe the data. In this case, we could say, well, we've got a couple of species eating very big seeds, a couple of species eating small seeds, and one in the middle. But if you really did need to know whether the medium ground finch was specifically different from the large or the small, then you could um, do something else. You could actually run a thing called a post hoc test, because what we're doing here is post hoc. That means kind of after the fact. So we've done the main analysis and after the main analysis, post hoc, we want to make some comparisons. So these are called post hoc comparisons and you make them using post hoc tests. So what's a post hoc test? It's a, just a pairwise test between two groups within a factor that has more than two groups to start with. So our factor species had five different levels or groups and we're saying now we want to compare just two of them. So at this point you're going, hang on a minute, we know how to do that, we just run a t-test. Well, yeah, you could just run a t-test, but there's a bit of a problem with that. The problem is that if we did t-tests between each possible pair in our data set, we would very rapidly have a lot of t-tests on our hands. Even for this simple example with only five species, if you've got 20 species, you're gonna have gazillions of t-tests. Every time you do a t-test, there's a chance you make a type one error. If you remember a type one error is rejecting the null hypothesis and concluding there's a significant difference when there actually isn't, it's just a chance event. Chance events happen. And the more often you do tests, the more often you're accidentally going to spot a chance event. So if we do a gazillion t-tests at the end of an analysis of variance, then we might well start concluding that there are significant differences which are not really there. We just making mistakes, type one errors. So post hoc tests allow us to adjust for that. They have a sort of inbuilt correction for the fact that we're multiply testing the same data with the same basic hypothesis. Uh, you don't need to know exactly how that bit works. There are actually various different types of post hoc tests which make slightly different assumptions, um, but I'm not gonna teach them on this course. My objective here, the learning outcome, is for you to know what a post hoc test is and so if you ever get to this point in an analysis, you probably will do at ANOVA at some point in your scientific careers, then um, you know that there is a post hoc test available should you need it in order to make those individual comparisons. Okay, so that's post hoc tests. That's all we're gonna say about those. Uh, I finally wanna finish on the assumptions of analysis of variance of which there are a sort of fairly predictable collection. So ANOVA is a parametric test and just like a t-test, it therefore makes uh, some assumptions. It assumes that your data are independent, so they aren't kind of paired like we saw in the paired t-test. If you violate that assumption, and by all means go back to the earlier lectures to remind yourself what I mean by independent, um, 
then you've got a bit of a problem on your hands. There are some more complicated forms of analysis of variance which can cope, a bit like a paired t-test can cope with a lack of independence. These more complex forms of ANOVA can, um, but it's a bit tricksy uh, and it doesn't always provide you with the solution you want. You can often rectify the problem before you even start the experiment by carefully designing the experiment so that the data are independent. But essentially, it depends a bit on what you're trying to achieve, whether you end up with a more complex analysis or whether you refine your experimental design to make sure that you don't have the problem in the first place. Another key assumption of analysis of variance of difference tests in general like this is that the variances of the individual groups are the same. So um, that's a crucial assumption in the analysis of variance, just like it is in a t-test. And we happily already know we have a diagnostic test for the homogeneity of variance, which is called Levine's test. So just as you can use Levine's test for a t-test, I mean prior to a t-test, you can use Levine's test prior to analysis of variance to check the assumption of equal or homogeneous variances. Uh, if you fail that test, if there are significant differences among the groups in terms of variance, then there are alternative tests available for analysis of variance that will do the job. And then finally, um, we assume with this parametric test, like many others, that the underlying data follow a normal distribution, or rather the data in each group follow a normal distribution. And we already know how to test for that with the shapiro work test, which you can run easily in most software packages, and it will tell you whether the, each sample is normal. And then also, we know of a tactic that we can do to get around the problem if, if the data are not normal. We can try transforming the data by log transforming it or arc sign transforming it or square root transforming it. There are various options. If you do the same thing to every data point so that you're being fair and you end up with something that looks normal and passes the shapiro wilk test, then that's fine. You can go ahead with ANOVA. But if you can't solve it that way, the alternative is to use a non-parametric version of analysis of variance. Um, and that's what we're going to deal with next week, as well as more complicated analysis of variance designs when we have more than one factor. Because so far we've looked at multiple levels within a factor, but now we're going to look at more complex situations where you not only have multiple levels, but also multiple factors. Okay, so I will see you then.